Time now for us to move on to have a look at the international newspapers. Diptyka Laurent is with us on set for that. And Diptyka, this time we're going to start in India, where protests against the government's citizenship bill continue. That's right. And there's a lot of focus uh, on the student movement in the press today, the Indian press. That those protests continue. Uh, and students have really been at the forefront of uh, these week, weeks-long protests now. The Indian Daily First Post reporting that the Young Indian Coordination Committee, a sort of umbrella group for student organizations, led hundreds of students in Delhi uh, on Monday to demonstrate against the government's planned citizen, uh, Citizenship Amendment Act and National Register for Citizens. Um, protesters say it essentially goes against the secular nature of Indian society. It could create a sort of caste uh, discrimination and could result in millions of Indian Muslims being declared illegal aliens in their own country. Um, another daily, the New Indian Express, noting that students weren't just protesting in Delhi, but all across the country, from Mumbai to Kolkata to Ahmedabad. Indeed, the students are playing a major role in these protests, but also women. That's right. And then, in fact, the Guardian's article here on, on the women protesters in India um, begins with uh, the story of a 90-year-old Indian woman who's lived through British colonial rule, the Indian War of Independence partition with Pakistan, and largely stayed out of politics until now. Um, women are conducting sit-ins, they're participating in demonstrations. One uh, elderly woman was even camping uh, outside the demonstrations uh, for weeks. Why has this protest struck a chord with them. Well, uh, The Guardian explains that women have more to lose under these under these new plan changes. They, women in general tend to have less documentation. They're poorer. They're less likely to have, uh, for instance, their birth registered. All things that will be needed to prove their Indianness if these laws go through. Indeed, they do sound quite frightening. A good report actually currently on France 24 website about that from our reporters in India, the latest reporters show. For now, though, Dutika, let's move on. And Donald Trump's impeachment is getting underway today, the, only the third of its kind in history. Yeah, and it's garnering a lot of interest from uh, the world papers. Let's start with Le Figaro, the French um, right-wing paper, which says that the impeachment trial is seen by Donald Trump supporters as a political settling of scores, if you like. The editor is saying categorically in its editorial today that this trial will not change public opinion, uh, and that's something that, that's really a feeling shared by a lot of the papers, that it will not weaken Donald Trump's re-election hopes. He will be, though, forced to go through the, quote, indignity of a public trial and the shame of being just the third president in U.S. history to be uh, facing an impeachment trial. For the Swiss paper Le Temps, the trial may appear, quote, frustrating or futile. Uh, for instance, Senate Majority uh, Leader Mitch McConnell wants uh, to expedite the process. But uh, Le Temps says it's nonetheless a necessary procedure. Uh, on the flip side, though, you have uh, this opinion from the Washington Times, which is a conservative uh, daily U.S. paper, saying the trial will be a permanent stain on the Democrats' legacy. I quote, it's the Democrats who have plotted ways to reverse the will of voters who elected Trump. It is Democrats who fear he'll be overwhelmingly re-elected re in November. OK, interesting angles on that. Uh, meanwhile, the British-Australian academic jailed in Iran has revealed the ordeal through letters that were smuggled out of her prison cell. That's right. Kylie Moore, Gil uh, Kylie Moore Gilbert, a lecturer in Islamic studies at the University of Melbourne, was arrested in September 2018 and convicted of espionage. Now, in a case of 10 letters written in a pretty rudimentary Farsi that were smuggled out of her prison cell at the notorious Even Prison, um, uh, were passed on to the Times and The Guardian. Um, her prison section is run by the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps. She's been, uh, she explains that she's been in periods of um, uh, solitary confinement. She reveals that she's taking psychiatric medication, that there's been a severe deterioration in her mental state. She has little money to buy food because she's actually allergic to most of the prison food. She also says she fears being manipulated by being given conflicting verdicts on her jail term and accuses the Corps of, quote, playing an awful game with with me. Now, The Guardian also um, relaying her story uh, in their edition today. They also viewed the letters uh, focusing on uh, the fact that she says she was asked to work as a spy for Iran on multiple occasions um, in exchange for her release from prison, but she uh, uh, firmly refuses. 
Okay, well, uh, finally, Diptyka, from you, uh, something a lot less serious now and something that may say a lot about our world with the amount of attention <laughs> this photo is getting. It's images of Brad Pitt and Jennifer Aniston that looks quite tactile and friendly at the Screen Actors Guild Awards. Maybe more than friendly. I'm glad you mentioned that um, uh, the, that uh, critical aspect of it, actually. Eve. Their behaviour did leave many um, internet users, uh, um, in, it sort of sent them into full overdrive about whether this means they're getting back together, are they reunited? Uniting. Admittedly, it left many rolling their eyes uh, at our penchant for, quote, vacuous celebrity obsessed cultures, according to The Telegraph. But the paper insists that, uh, rather earnestly in this article, that our obsession with Brad and Jen is far deeper uh, than just celebrity culture. This, I quote, is a modern day parable about love and loss. You know, when they got married, both were successful in their own right, unsullied by imbalances and ego, and then came along the femme fatale, um, Angelina Jolie. So even if you don't care about their story, you have to admit that theirs is, theirs is a story worthy of a Shakespearean tale. I think it's just they both look good and we like being distracted from the news. <laughs> Diptyko Laurent, thanks a lot for that look at the international papers.